So there's a couple of different types of DHCP attacks we want to protect against. The first is DHCP starvation. And with the DHCP starvation attack, what happens is an attacker will hook up to our network and they will send multiple DHCP requests. And they'll change the MAC address every single time. So it's seen as a new request and the DHCP server then will start leasing addresses and it will end up leasing all of its available addresses until there are none left and then it is starved of addresses and this creates kind of a denial of service attack. So DHCP starvation we can mitigate by setting up port security and if you remember port security was uh, limits the number of MAC addresses you're allowed to communicate through a port. So if I limit that then an attacker can't just send unlimited DHCP requests. So that helps stop DHCP starvation. Doesn't stop DHCP spoofing. A DHCP spoof attack involves an attacker setting up a rogue DHCP server. And the idea behind it is that if the attacker sets out a, a road DHCP server out here, when PC1 requests a DHCP address, it will reply. And if it's the first reply PC1 gets, PC1 will use its DHCP address instead of the valid one. Now the purpose behind this is the attacker can then say set himself as the default gateway. And so the PC1 to communicate with the rest of the network will go through the attacker's computer. And then the attacker can intercept all of that traffic. This is a man in the middle attack. And it can be quite damaging. So the way we block this is by using DHCP snooping. And what DHCP snooping does is it stops DHCP requ or replies. Remember you have a DHCP discover message that the client sends out. Hey, I need a DHCP address. This one's going the server is going to reply with the DHCP offer. And DHCP snooping blocks DHCP offers from any ports except ones that it trusts. So that's the idea of DHCP snooping. Now, here's how we'll configure this. Let's start by opening up S1, and we'll do our use it for our example. Now, just as a reminder, uh, we've used this network in a couple of other videos, but just as a reminder, PC0 is connected to F01, PC1 is connected to F02. S1 is, or yeah, S1 has a trunk port on G01 to switch to, which has a DHCP server on it. So the only port that we want DHCP offers coming from is going to be G01. So, global config. We're going to start by enabling DHCP snooping. And the command is IP DHCP snooping. And that enables the DHCP snooping process on our switch. Then we need to define which interfaces we are going to trust. So for that, we're going to go into interface G01 because this is where we expect DHCP offers to be coming from. And our command is IP DHCP snooping there we go. Trust. And that says that I have to spell IP correctly. And that says that we now trust DHCP offer messages coming back from this uh, port. Now the other thing we can do is we can limit the DHCP, uh, the amount of DHCP discover messages that can come through the rest of our ports. So this is kind of a rate limiting thing. And it'll keep an attacker from just sending unlimited DHCP requests through a port in hopes of tying up the DHCP server. So for that we go to every other port. So I'm going to go to interface range and I want this on all of them F01 through 24 and the command is IP DHCP snooping limit and I'm going to question mark this so you can see it here real quick. The DHCP snooping limit is going to be, let's do limit and let's say, ah shoot I forgot the word rate. Limit rate and then 1 through 2048. Now this is a number of DHCP discover messages per second. 
that can be received on this port. I'm going to set it to 10 just because I need to set it to something. So it's IP DHCP snooping limit rate, and then that sets our DHCP rate. So the 11th request per second will be blocked. Now the last thing back in global config is to enable DHCP snooping on our VLANs. And in this network, do show VLAN brief, we have VLANs 10, 20, 30, 40. And VLAN 1, even though nothing's there. We're going to go ahead and enable it anyway. So it's IP DHCP snooping. And then we're going to start specifying our VLANs. So we'll do VLAN 1, comma 10, comma 20, comma 30, comma 40. And that should specify our DHCP snooping. All right, at this point, DHCP snooping is configured. I'm going to exit out of here. And we're going to do a show run. And this is going to give us our configuration so far. So IP DHCP snooping is enabled on all of those VLANs. IP DHCP snooping process is enabled. And then for all of these, we're going to have, in a previous video, we talked about uh, setting protection against VLAN hopping. So that's enabled. And then, as we go down through our network, on G01, we have our trusted IP DHCP snooping trust relation or trust configuration okay so at this point we have can uh, protected against DHCP snooping and DHCP or DHCP snooping and in a previous video was the rest of our configurations to protect against VLAN hopping attacks while we're here let's in another video we've talked about port security you can find that other video but I'm gonna go ahead and run through it real quick here just so uh, you can see how to protect against DHCP starvation attacks. So back to global config, and I'm going to do all of my fast Ethernet interfaces. So you never want to set switch port security on ports that are trunk ports. You only want it done on access ports. So I'm going to go to interface range F01 through 24, which is going to be all of my ports that are facing the rest of the world, not my trunk port, where I don't want to set port security. The command is switch port port security, and that turns it on. And then we're going to configure it. So switch port port security, and you can set your aging when things age out, your MAC address if you're setting manually setting a MAC address, the, or setting up for sticky MAC addresses. A maximum is going to be the maximum number of addresses that are available and then the violation mode. So I want to set maximum to 2. The default is 1 which actually is a better option. I'm doing 2 because you'll actually be able to see it. Switch port, port security. I want violation mode shut down. And remember we go in another video we go into more detail on all of this. So I'm just going to do this real quick. You can reference the other video to see what all of these mean. So violation mode shut down and then I'm going to use uh, sticky MAC addresses. So switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. Alright, then I'm going to exit out and let's do a show run and we're going to look at interface F01 and here is our DHCP snooping protection, our access port and disabling DTP and our port security. So at this point, these should be protected against VLAN hopping attacks and DHCP attacks.